Hey guys, thanks for checking my video out as today I have finally completed something very special to me. Uh, this has literally taken me months in the making and to finally have it all here I'm really excited to bring and share and that is the construction of my first ever surfboard. If you are perhaps following me on Instagram, you may have seen a few pictures and uh, videos of my progress on this uh, board. Um, I'd always hoped, however, to make a video of the complete journey uh, for YouTube. Yeah, uh, just sharing a few pictures and videos of the progress as it went. This is a quick disclaimer. This is not a how-to or guide video on how to make your own surfboard. There are far better videos out there on YouTube that you can definitely check out that helped me as well. Uh, rather, just sharing some of the hurdles I had, some of you know challenges and uh, yeah just the finished product and outcome that uh, might be insightful to those kind of wanting to give this a shot and finally the footage and photos you'll see here are from a mixture of cameras and even just mobile phones so sorry about the video and audio quality at times uh, but that's just how it went when capturing some of these moments so yeah let's get into it so like I stated, this had actually taken me quite a few months to do. Uh, it started with the unpacking of my delivered blank back in the 7th of March. There isn't an awful lot to share here, um, only that the blank was just so much fatter than I had predicted. I ordered a 6'4 fish blank and my goal was to make an egg surfboard measuring at about 6'2. Uh, a side note here, I had gotten very lucky with my first blank order, uh, it, it arrived damage free and in perfect nick but my following two blanks that I've ordered because I'm currently shaping another board uh, they both arrived damaged so it was kind of it was really nice that my first ever uh, blank actually came in uh, untouched so yeah uh, definitely worth keeping in mind so my next step was uh, sawing out the shape of the surfboard from the blank I was using a template provided from a website called blending curves uh, it's a great website uh, to find a whole bunch of printable templates in a wide range of different shapes and sizes. If you're curious, I used their Egg B template uh, and it's listed as their uh, speed egg as well. Uh, this was just a matter of laying out the template and cutting out the shape. I found it particularly helpful to keep the saw pointed almost vertically downwards into the blank. Um, adding to this, I made sure to cut out little chunks of the side as I went as I didn't want any of the larger hanging pieces uh, to like break and snap off into the board. I learned that any cut mark uh, extending beyond the line of your um, surfboard shape uh, will be left in the board in your final product. I was kind of hoping to sand it out when I came to making the rails, but the cut marks, if they just extend past that line of your initial shape, they're gonna be in the final product. It doesn't cause really any issue with the final product, you're just gonna see it, um, and it doesn't look as clean or professional. So, uh, worthwhile cutting out, take your time, do the vertical saw action, and just sort of follow the template. You can even just stay on the outside of the line, because what I did is I used a surfboard, um, and you know, sanding blocks, and just basically sanded out the shape back to the line. Even still doing this, I still had a few cut marks on the blank, which I think you might see here and there. Uh, but overall, still very happy with the step. It came out pretty well. I was very happy with it, so yeah. Whew, planning. Um, I think this was my most feared step in the process. I honestly believe that any mistake here would spell disaster to the rest of the project so i was very cautious here i took my time and um yeah i was just doing it as slowly as i could really i had the adjustment the depth adjustment on one of the lower settings so i was taking off minuscule amounts as i went but look i played it safe in that regard um a lot of difficulty in terms of the rocker on the nose so on the deck of the board um, i did the diagonal cuts uh, that I'd seen others do, and I think I'll mention it in my um, previous footage too and like, show it. My biggest difficulty has been the deck and the nose so far, and um, maybe in the time lapse, I've seen, seen others kind of do this sort of cross pattern on the top, but I've found that it digs in and I get a quite a lot of unevenness doing it. It might be a machine feeling thing that I have to kind of learn, but every time I've got a bit worried, I've gotten out the surf form and kind of just evened it out. You can still sort of see the lines, but it's it, it it feels much better than it looks 
it looks like there's big gouges, but actually it feels pretty good. Um, the rest of the deck further back here, I'm actually very happy happy with the evenness. Quite happy to say good. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue planing off the bottom to get to my thickness, so I'm not touching the deck too much. Uh, might be a little bit of a, a cheat's way out, but if it works, then it works. This is why I'm doing an egg, because this, this tiny bit of rocker on the nose, which is like nothing, is is actually... A challenge and if I was trying to make a short board or something with a lot more rocker I know I just would have faced a lot of difficulties again it's a learning thing I think the feeling will come over time um, but if you're ever really concerned about that definitely do a pass on the deck to, you know so you're getting rid of that external blank layer of foam uh, but then just flip it over and run that planer on the back because that's going to be much easier to work down on your first board that's what i recommend just be careful not to do it too much because then if you keep taking out the bottom you're going to really start having a more and more enhanced rock up if i'm not mistaken yeah. oh just knocked the camera i did it again <laughs> so if the rails i was thinking a lot because i'd seen like shaping lines and all these diagrams and all these depths and things and I was considering doing that, but I started getting to a point when I was making the board that I just wanted to go and do it. I put myself off for such a long time, reading, looking at videos, trying to work out how to go about this, overthinking it essentially. And I realized I just wanted to do it. So I just basically made myself three um, markers um, and sort of guessed where I want, you know, my tail to stay boxy, uh, the nose to sort of, you know, start folding around, like, you know, having more of a rounded edge. Um, the board I definitely left far fatter and boxier than probably was required, but I wanted to make something different than what you would just find on the shelf. So the tail was almost left untouched, just a little bit on the edges just to give it a bit of roundness, but otherwise almost a square tail. I wanted to make a quiver killer board, so to speak, an egg that's just a general all rounder, but a bit fatter so you can even use it on flatter conditions or like, you know, um, more of long boarding on Malibu sort of waves sort of thing, but you know, have a bit more performance issues not that many just make sure to keep an eye on the nose because I, I started creating that beak look if you don't sand uh, the nose and the tail but you can't do the rails around it so hand planer go along the stringer cut it off and sand it back again with the block uh, rails actually found was quite enjoyable I enjoyed I enjoyed that step and it wasn't too bad so yeah in terms of the color, I didn't want to tinker around with pigments in resin. So I essentially stuck to the uh, Montan Montana MTN foam safe spray paints and basically colored the foam underneath the glass. I found this, um, in my eyes, a more efficient and effective way to go about color um, as I'd never really worked out catalyst and like resin ratios. So I wanted to leave pigment out of the question and just worry about glassing. I find this a really effective way if you want to get colour on your board and not have to um, worry about pigments. It came, came out really nice, really clear. You can definitely take the board and create all these patterns and spray the colour directly onto the foam. It looks amazing. The orange absolutely stands out and um, I, I, the colour was incredible. I nearly didn't even want to glass the board because it looked so good that I know that when I was going to put the fiberglass over it's going to start like hiding a bit of it. Uh, but again. I was really happy with the outcome in terms of the colour. Uh, on to glassing. <laughs> well, I thought planing was going to be the tough one, but it was definitely glassing. I was making a polyurethane surfboard, so you standard resin, standard foam sort of board. I had already tinkered and played around with resining and glassing uh, through repairs and like ding repairs of boards. Um, so I didn't feel of it being too much of a jump, but <laughs> I was kind of wrong there. <laughs> Getting that catalyst and resin amount is very critical because you don't want it setting too quick on you. I was actually very happy with my first attempt. I did the underside first and for the most part, saturation was pretty good. I was very happy with the wrap. Uh, it all turned out pretty well. Um, the deck was the issue by far. I did a double layer. I did a patch layer of um, six ounce on the deck and then another six ounce wrap. Not enough resin, just as simple as that. I didn't saturate it enough into both layers of cloth. Uh, so always make more than you're expecting to. Uh, let that really soak in and push it through the red into the uh, fiberglass. I kind of just let it sit there and hoped it would do the job. Uh, but you definitely need to drive it if you've got that second layer, especially on six ounce uh, thicker cloth. Uh, by no means perfect, 
but I was relatively happy with the end result. Now, I don't really have much footage after this because I kind of just wanted to do it. I kind of got over filming it for a little bit. Filler coats were very important and I did one massive mistake. If there's any takeaway you get from me in this video when you're making your board, it is do not use laminating resin as a filler coat because I was naive and I, I had just thought, oh yeah, cool, resin's resin. It's not gonna matter, it's gonna be a filler coat because I was running low on filler resin and boy was I wrong. It remained tacky, unsandable. Thank goodness I only did this on the deck of my board and not on the underside, but it caused me nightmares. I honestly sanded this board for ages. I went through so much sandpaper. I The machine wouldn't do it. Nothing would want to work and get a good sanding finish. So don't do that. Make sure you use a laminating when you're, when you're laminating cloth filler, when you're filling the board, and then you finish gloss layers on those final coats. So you're gonna have far better results and far better outcomes. Um, that was definitely a mistake of mine and I will not be doing that again. <laughs> and then yes, drill the fit plugs and the leash plug. So yeah, after months of winging it, guessing mistakes and some uh, successes, I finally had a surfboard, which was really awesome to say and also to have. The first surf, well, I didn't film the first surf in itself. I do have before and after footage and pictures, which I'm going to show, I guess, now. Good morning, this is Adam Morin here from Process Coaching. Look here, this situation we have a today. You? Daniel. Oh, <laughs> and Daniel want to wax his own board. Like, it's not the board he buy on the shop, but the board <laughs> he's make from the scratch. So he shaped his board, he laminated, he's sanding, Everything. he put the things. Now is the good time, Daniel, I want to resist that to waxing thing. And uh, I want you talking a bit what you feel about to have a, your own board on a... Uh, 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 it's going to be a crazy moment. I hope it floats. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I uh, just wanted to go for something a bit thicker than you would usually get, a bit shorter. Just a cruisy board as my first one. Nice egg shape there, a bit more of a boxy rail on the back. So I reckon it's just gonna cruise and go. And uh, yeah, pretty keen. Nothing too flash, but. And here's uh, the in. signature. <laughs> hey man. man, all the way. Number one. Number one. Wow, Virtual well done, one. man. One of, one of many to come. Many of the surfers surf they all life and they never been keen like it. Myself. I always like to do a surfboard and I never done. And you already passed me. Good on you, man. Cheers. Well done. Cheers, Ed. Woo. And uh, thanks for all the support, Ed, and Pro Surf Coach, for sure. Yeah, now I want to check it out this board today. This is Daniel uh, after the session. Hey, on. Tell me what you feel about your new board. Uh, like, yeah, the board you shape by yourself, your design. It's a good feeling. Uh, that first one I got, I was I was just blown away. The board just, it carried through the wave. It just responded back nicely. And too bad the wind changed on us at the end there. But True. I just, the first, I couldn't have asked for a better first wave, honestly. I had three good sections I could push through. And um, it just, it just, I, I, I did the maneuver and it just kind of wanted, it just was like, okay, no, let's go. Let's keep going. So yeah. it just wants to move through that next bit. And I'm just, I'm stoked. Honestly, I couldn't have asked a better first wave of this board. So as you can see, I was really stoked and blown away. The board just carried. It has a lot of volume, a lot of float, and it just wants to drive down the wave. You know, it didn't, it doesn't respond as well as like a high performance board or something like that, but it did actually respond quite quickly when I did put a lot of weight in my back foot and that square rail dug in. So I was really happy with the outcome. I couldn't have asked for better especially on my first board you know to make something differently shaped than what you would usually find it makes it even more special to me in that regard i have some footage of me surfing the board and uh enjoy <laughs>
So yeah, in conclusion, uh, if you love surfing, if you love boards, give it a go. Absolutely. You will have the most uh, crazy respect for shapers and glasses. I think more for glasses than shapers sometimes because glassing and doing dealing with resin is such a such a nightmare to be honest. But uh, yeah, give it a go, give it a shot, you will treasure the board forever. I, I think I will anyways, I hope it lasts forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, you'll be surprised in what the results are. I, I definitely am. The board is enjoyable to surf. I've taken it out already numerous times. Um, it's responsive, it's mine, it feels great, and it's just all I could have hoped for. So, you know, if you ever considered it, it can be messy, it is tricky, it is finicky, but give it a go. The result, no matter what it is, will be worth it in the end for you. I hope this sort of makes the journey not as frightening and uh, kind of shows what is possible, uh, you know, if you if you give it a shot. So thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, looking forward to more videos, um, more content in general uh, from me. And uh, yeah, really excited for what I have um, in store. Thanks. Yeah.